Hello, Internet. Gino, that pinguino, Grieco here again with another episode of Deep Listens. And today's a very special episode, as every episode is. But today is extra, extra special because we're talking about not that much video games, but a lot more music. Because I recently went to Lollapalooza for the first time, and so I thought it would be nice to talk about some of the stuff that happened there, and also some stuff involving Twitch streamer Ninja happened at Lollapalooza, and he's also in the news recently. So I thought it'd be a good time to convene a special podcast about some musical stuff, about some Twitch streaming stuff, and I've brought on some of the, the people who have joined me during the experience. So you may remember from the Worst Friends Forever WFF pod, uh, Emily Keller. Hello. Hi. Hey, guys. I'm happy to be back. This will also be on our channel as a quick shot. So I am having a drink, and I'm drinking um, oat milk and Bailey's chocolate oat milk. What? I know. <laughs> I've out hipstered myself. Oh, wow. I'm on a whole new level. Oat milk and Bailey's. Is the Bailey's Choc- like locally sourced? What are we talking about here? It's not, but it is the almond milk version. It's like the almond liqueur. Almond milk Bailey. That great. That's excellent. And we also There's a lot. We also have another special guest. Uh first time on the show, but first time in a long time. Um my my wife, Jen. Hey everyone. She is she you some people who have followed like the community endurance run and some of the other stuff we've done, you she has been on some of that stuff, but this is her first time on the Wait. podcast. She's the, this is the first time on your podcast. Yes. She's been on your podcast. She's been she has been on WFF. I'm a WFF veteran. Thank you, friend of the pod. Yeah, she's a friend. She's a friend of the pod. That's true. She, she, to be fair, she mostly dislikes video games, so that makes her a less easy fit on my show. But that's fine. We finally made it happen. I, well, I I mostly dislike the experience of video games. I appreciate their their art form. I appreciate what they are there for. I appreciate why people love them. They just stress me out. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. They mostly stress you out. It's not that you have a disdain for gaming. You went to PAX East. You enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was fun. Got to do some some virtual fake cooking. That yeah. was really fun. You played Job Simulator. That was yeah. pretty great. But that is not why we are here today. We are here today to discuss Lollapalooza because you two, you two wrote me in. I knew I'd get you one day. Just year after year chipping away. Jen, Jen roped you in. Yes. I was like, Jen, do you and Gino want to come? <laughs> and, and I said, I will make this happen. Wait. It took a couple <laughs> years, but the patience was worth it. It did happen. It was the long eventually. game. Eventually. You played the long game, mm-hmm. and eventually, one year, Emily was like, hey, we want to pay less for the hotel room. Do you guys want to uh So to accurate. Come with? <laughs> and, uh... It's embarrassingly accurate. Those hotel rooms, though. Expensive. They drive out the prices during Lala weekend. We gotta, it's not you know, work the system. Yeah, it makes sense. But we we did it. So this was my first time in Chicago. For those who are not familiar, Lollapalooza is a music festival based out of Grant Park in Chicago, Illinois. So it's right next to uh, Lake Michigan, which is it's a very mm-hmm. nice location. It takes over basically yeah. downtown Chicago for four days. It's also international. I True. they do. Do Paris, Berlin, Buenos Aires, Santiago. I was going to say, so I know um, they go to South America. I'm not sure where. Yeah. I I really want to go to Lollapalooza, Berlin. That's the one that I feel like that would be so is made fun. for me. I feel like Germany. Yeah, I feel like Ber- where Berlin I should would be. just be ready to roll with Lollapalooza. I wouldn't be able to understand any of the signs. <laughs> I've been to Germany for one weekend in my whole life. That's it. And um, it was an adventure because I couldn't read anything or understand what was happening. Yeah. That language is difficult. I would be – I'd be down to go to either Santiago or Buenos Aires because South America knows how to party. I'd be, so, I'd I'd be into that. But alas, we had to go to Chicago. <laughs> we hung out in Chicago. And uh, Chicago was pretty good. This was – how many times have you been to Lollapalooza Jen? This is my second time. First time was um, 2015. It's been a few years. Yeah. Okay. Emily, how many times have you been to Lollapalooza? This was my fifth year in a row. They're all in a row. It's horrifying. 
have it, still having a good time? <laughs> yeah. Um, some years are better than others. There are some that stand out to me as being better. Um, and like, there are years I'm like, well, the weather was the best this year. And like, oh, the lineup was the best this year. The crowd was the best that, you know, oh, I had the most fun with my friends this year, you know? So they all kind of stand out in different ways, I think. And so Lollapalooza, have you been to any other music festivals? Um, not like a full four day, like a whole weekend thing. I have gotten like day passes to others, but nothing on this scale. Nothing. Nothing where they recommend you leave your wallet and your ID and everything (laughs) behind. No. (laughs) Yeah. No, nothing like that. Okay. But how does it rate when compared with those experiences? Like does you've gone five times. Clearly you must like it. Yeah. I do really like it. I do think that as I get older, I feel older when I'm at the fest, and I'm kind of like, I don't need to be around all these drunk eighth graders. Um, So, like, every year I do kind of think, and I know our other friend who goes with me every year anyway, uh, Ellie, also a friend of the WFF pod, um, she and I have talked briefly about maybe finding another festival, because the festival experience I really enjoy, but sometimes I'm like, maybe... Lollapalooza is skewing too young now. Yeah, I um, I don't, I don't know if that was more of a gradual experience for you. Um, it's been a few years since I've been to Lollapalooza, so for me, there was very much like a before and after effect. Um, it's intense. Where I don't, I don't know if the the people were that young when we went. They, it's probably they probably were. Um, there weren't as many of them. Yeah. Okay. So like. I, it, it was a very intense shock, and um, I normally, with with big crowds like that, you know, if I know what I'm getting into, I can, like, get in the mindset where I'm just, like, you know, ready to deal with whatever, um, which generally was the case here, but when, I was not prepared for the number of, you know, 18 to 22-year-olds just, you know, crowding around me and with no sense of personal space. And um, it was a little overwhelming. A I definitely felt I was a part of the geriatric crowd. Oh, yeah. Time. I felt like I was everybody's mother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we were very concerned for everyone's health at all times. It was it was a lot. It was a big <laughs> We were like, oh, my God, they're not safe. Yeah. yeah. They're not wearing sunscreen. They're not hydrating. <sighs> well, I can tell you that when I was waiting for the School of Rock All-Stars and TW Tumbles down at Kids of Palooza, I felt right at home. So. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> It's true. He's actually a five-year-old. Those, uh, they had a skate park set up. So for anyone who's not familiar with Lollapalooza, it's got a pretty unique setup. Like, there are maybe eight or nine stages all together in Grant Park. Uh, On opposite ends of the park, there are two main stages, the Budweiser TM stage and the Tito's, Tito's Fancy Vodka stage. Um, They are on one side. And then opposite that, is the Grant Park main stage, which is the main main stage, mm-hmm. and then there's a lakeside stage or lake stage, Lake Shore, Lake Shore, lake shore. which is unbranded but available. If any listeners want to brand the hell out of that, worth noting, Grant Park used to be Samsung and also Pepsi. It's I've been through a few sponsors. Okay, so and sometimes sometimes I call stages by their like incorrect names. Great, I don't get them right. Well, I'm. For a small fee, I'm sure that you could have your your brand associated with this fine festival. Um, so there's those four kind of – like two main stages and two side stages. Then there is Perry's, which is a nightmare. It's an EDM we don't, nightmare. You go in and you – We don't go out. there. So we don't we don't go to Perry's. Yeah, so most stages are on rotation. Like they'll have something at one time and then another person will come on. Like the main stage and the side stage will kind of trade off. And then there are yeah, some other stages. Yeah, tag team it. But Perry's never stops. It never stops. It's just an ongoing EDM trash fest. It's from noon till 10 p.m. And just all I saw were people staggering out of Perry's and fire shooting out from Perry's from over the tree line. I could just hear techno and fire, which was about Perry's right. has one good thing going for it. The one good thing going for Perry's is that the hydration station is 360 degrees. It is a circle. 
helps break up the lines. It's very nice. It's the only thing, only positive I will say about Paris. Lollapalooza, take notes. Put that elsewhere, please. Please. Yeah, I would love those everywhere. Everywhere there's a hydration station, they should be the 360 degree ones. Yes, I I would like it if the hydration station attendants are locked in, surrounded by people who want water. Yes, from all sides. Let's just make that happen. Yeah, one hundred percent. I don't see. Are you insinuating there's a problem with that? Like, no, no, I'm not. I don't get no, it. I, I, <laughs> are, you, are you anti hydration? No, I'm pro locking them in. I want them surrounded. Okay, good. Um, good. <laughs> So then there's two side stages that are, like, truly – they're in kind of, like, the middle of the park. Both of them have shade, which is powerful. It turns out that you'll listen to just about anything when you've been out <laughs> in 100-degree weather with no shade if you can just sit under a tree. So those are kind of the side mm-hmm. venues. They have the smaller acts. And then there's Kids of Palooza where you can skateboard and be a, a cool kid and listen to the School of Rock All-Stars multiple times. <laughs> Which True. Which Dino did yeah. not do. Only because we didn't let him. <laughs> They're, Let's be clear. Look, those kids are good enough for Broadway. They're good enough for you. So, I did hear okay. some of them. I, I walked by. <laughs> I may have, well, when I said I was going to the bathroom once, went to see the School of Rock All-Stars. I mean, conveniently, Kids of Palooza is located just across from the wine tent, which is my home base because there's wine there and uh yeah so you i see kids of palooza a lot i have never truly gone there it's got shade it does have shade which is important because children yeah i think if you want to explore kids of palooza generally if you don't want to get arrested you actually need a child with you i think that's part of the part of the process it's just better for optics yeah yeah you know Speak yeah. for yourself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep. So this year, what were the acts that really stood out to you? Which ones did you really enjoy? Because I felt at any given time there was like one act on one main stage that appealed to the youths. And then opposite was an act that generally skewed a little bit older. And by older, I mean like 25. Like not that yeah. much older. Older is very relative in this context. Um to me, my favorites of the weekend were the Aces, Jack White, Wesley Arms, Walk the Moon, Portugal the Man. Those all stood out to me. Yeah, I would agree with a good chunk of those. Um, I really loved Jack White, Portugal the Man. Um, I had a good time at Bruno Mars mo- toward the end because we got to dance. There was a little more room. Room. Um, Bruno Mars was a lot of fun. Yes. I wouldn't. And I'm glad I went to that set because that is not a concert I would pay for on its own. Right, 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 right. Like, I wouldn't pay to see his tour. And it was super fun. Yeah. Um, Also, Gian and I went to see Bomba Stereo, which is um, a, a, I believe they're Colombian duo. They're Colombian duo. Um, If you were to listen to their music for a long period of time, it gets obnoxious a little bit. They've got... um, but they've got a sound that's really great for dancing, and they're really, really fun performers. So we had a great time. Um, yeah, so really enjoyed that. Um, I thought Camila Cabello brought it. Like, she brought her... She was Yeah, fun. she was really fun. Like, she was a fucking pro. You know, she had her dancer. She was... It was just a really, really great show. Like, she came wanting to make her audience happy. Um, so, yeah, I really loved her performance. Yeah, she... Mm-hmm. It goes to show that the girl band boot camp really prepares you for performing because it really does. It really, the first day, my standards were brought very high very early on because Camila Cabello was not even one of the main stage people and she had choreography and backup dancers. And I thought that it was like going to be a bunch of micro concerts, but some of the acts were. You know, they they were kind of micro concerts, but they did not bring it to that level. Like I expected that to be everyone, and she, her, and basically Bruno Mars were the only people who brought that level of uh, performance. Perf- yeah, that level of dance and overall performance to the stage outside of just singing. Like everyone else was just kind of bopping along. Daya, BB Rexa, they were not prepared. They did not have choreography. Yeah, they didn't. Yeah. No. Um, I also want to give a shout out to Saint Vincent. Who, yes. for, 
How could oh, this have slipped yeah. my mind? She had pretty much she so she definitely had um, a guitar for each kind of sound that she wanted out of the guitar. But for a while there, it looked like she had a guitar for each song, um, and the guitars themselves were amazing. She looked amazing. Um, it was really funny was... watching people. She's definitely got a vibe about her when it comes to her performative um, <laughs> aesthetic. And there were some people who were not prepared um, for what she brought to, the, brought to the table. But, like, you know, amazing guitar skills, amazing performing skills. Um, like, I kind of dig the weirdness of St. Vincent. So, you know. I love I, the weirdness of St. Vincent. Um, yeah, she was amazing. I would describe her aesthetic, like watching it, it was like watching someone perform just incredibly sexual and disquieting music with Silent Hill or Resident Evil 5, like Resident Evil, the latest Resident Evil happening behind her. There were just people with no faces dancing behind her and just like a person in a monster costume. She just there's a video of her just vomiting for like two minutes slow that play motion. in slow motion, vomiting green behind her the whole time. Yeah, it definitely had a. It was um, amazing. Like an American story, American, American horror story feel for sure for anyone who's watched like an yeah. American horror story intro. Not to be confused yeah. with an American tale, Fifel Goes West. Yeah. Do not, <laughs> do not confuse the two. Please do not. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> Please. That would be dangerous. Don't. Don't. Yeah, so uh, St. Vincent really jumped out to me. I enjoyed Travis Scott. We were only there for a bit because the Arctic Monkeys, for some reason, just played all their new stuff for, like, frickin' 40 minutes. They wouldn't play any for of their hits time. for a while. They just kept playing new, slow-sounding songs. And we're like, yeah, let's check out Travis Scott for a bit. And his performance looked like drugs. And I really appreciated it, that. It did. Um, he Like, just looked like drugs. Yeah, his stage... No other, no other way to say he it. He was performing, and then, like, crazy video was happening behind him, and then he had DJ Booth's hovering above him suspended on screens so they, they yeah they were like screen boxes yes. with a dj like in it with a dj in it going up and down occasionally it it looked great it was it was cool yeah and he actually was performing like the day his latest album dropped and apparently he performed all his old songs and then said if you want to hear the new stuff he had an after show and he wasn't telling anyone where it was he didn't tell. He didn't give any details. He was just like, maybe if you're lucky, you'll find me. If you're lucky, you're lucky, which was great. I really appreciate. And it that. was just like, do you know this is a this is a large metropolitan city, Travis? <laughs> like, like one clue, maybe. Also, um, <laughs> like just one. Anybody who's seen the um, album art for Travis Travis Scott's new music, that giant yes. head is actually a real giant inflatable head that was there. Um, right outside of the stage, and it looked like like there was like a there was a hole through the mouth, and it looked like there was like a carnival if you walked. Yeah, you could it. like walk yeah. into his mouth, <laughs> which I've always if wanted. That is personally, if that's what you're into, like no judgment. Yeah, so that that was pretty great. Um, other performances, I liked the Aces. The Aces were great. Uh, Amy Shark Yay. was really fun. She was having a good time on the side stages. The side stages really stood out to me. The ones that are not like the main stage in the side stage, like American Eagle, I think was American one of them. Eagle. Yeah, the, BMI. These the Grove. These two. The Grove is kind of what we call the American Eagle stage because that's what it was called before it was sponsored. No. Yeah. Any of the stages where there was shade, because you could re- generally it was a smaller crowd. You had shade, which again I cannot mm-hmm. emphasize enough. It was a hundred degrees for four days. Shade. It was, it was 100 degrees for, like, three of the four days. There was one day where it was, like, 95. Yes, it was. <laughs> Free at your parkas. Yeah, it, yeah man. it was chilly. All those performances <laughs> I, I really enjoyed. Um, but there was one performance. The one thing, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, the, the thing that actually stood out for me more than the heat was the dust. Mm-hmm. So usually it's pretty much, it's basically tradition that it will rain during Lollapalooza and I've been evacuated multiple times because of storms um rain they let you stay in there and they stick to the schedule and you just gotta live in your poncho and the south stages normally those are baseball diamonds they're like community baseball diamonds so the infield is dirt and dust 
and it did not rain and there would just be like dust clouds coming off of the south stages and it got to me it was it was not fun dust bowl 2018 yeah it got in my eyes it really dried out my contacts i did not if you and you just i was not about the dust imagine taking the dust and then like putting it on your skin and layering it with sweat and sunblock Mm. it was oh yeah yeah quite the combo (laughs) which is like another reason why i think Lollapalooza is kind of it's it's definitely more my kind of music festival because you're not like at the end of the day going to a tent or like using shower tokens you are walking you know 10 minutes to your hotel taking a shower and then sleeping in a bed. A real shower yeah a real a shower. real mattress yeah yeah so I think about going to Bonnaroo all the time Bonnaroo and Lollapalooza pretty much they share so many acts every year and i am like ma- bonnaroo gears a little older it's not as many teenagers running around there is no parries and so i think about oh bonnaroo would be great and then i think about like doing a whole day and then going to sleep in a tent and i'm just like no 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 i want a mattress after this, I'm old. I'm old, and my spine needs a mattress, and that's just the yeah. end of it. I want to eat real food. I want to. At one point during one of the acts, I was inadvertently tapping my leg, like patting my leg, just drumming along mm-hmm. with the beat, having a good old time. And by the end of it, I realized that my hand had turned black because oh, God. the dirt from my leg had gotten onto my hand. That was that uh, was where we were at. I there was one day we had gone to the grove and I sat in the dirt and that was fine. I wasn't I don't sitting mind. in the dirt. I was I deliberately I, know you I was sitting. the person who didn't sit in any of the dirt. I tried to avoid it as best I could and I still was that dirt. I I sat in the dirt because I actually don't mind it that much, but then I stood up and it was just like my legs are dirty, my clothes are dirty, my possessions are dirty. And I actually went to the bodega and bought wet wipes. They didn't, it still did not help. I was just, I was like, okay, I'm just going to be filthy for the rest of the day. Just going to own it and be filthy. So what did you guys think of the fashion of Lollapalooza? Because I found. I love the, I love the fashion. I found it's that. It's ridiculous. It turns out, it looks like NBA jerseys might be the most common bit of, like, stand up piece Tune of fashion. Squad. Toon Squad jerseys. Toon Squad jerseys. Toon Squad. Toon Squad jerseys, Hawaiian shirts, and visible butts. Yep. We saw a lot of butts. I don't mind. I love butts. Yep. So, that's great. Can't can't complain. A lot of of crocheted clothing. Crocheted brassieres. Mm Mm-hmm. I like Lollapalooza fashion. I feel like it gives me a weekend in which I can dress ridiculous or younger than i am or everything can just be made of glitter it doesn't matter um yeah i i saw like it's hilarious i saw like two or three glitter elementals just walking around existing it, it, i don't know why everyone came covered already in glitter but I, it wasn't the worst thing yeah i i true story didn't really have to glitter myself because i would always find glitter on my body that did not come from me. Like, there was enough glitter just floating around in the atmosphere <laughs> that it would land on my I, skin. At one point, I think I was walking back from getting lunch or something, and I saw on the street, like, on the curb, just, like, spilled glitter. Oh, no, something happened there. It was just a there. pile. And I just looked at it, and I was like, this is a Lollapalooza tragedy. Yeah, there's a story <laughs> behind that glitter. I, I like Lollapalooza fashion. I feel like it doesn't use cultural appropriation as much as like Coachella fashion does. Right. Definitely. Um, so I'm not insanely uncomfortable the whole weekend being like, Oh no, these children, what have they done? Um, yeah, but I, I will say I have never seen so many white dudes in Allen Iverson jerseys in one place before <laughs> there were just so many. And it, you know, what made me feel old when post Malone was playing oh. And like the entire park was watching Post Malone instead of was it who I forget who was opposite him was it Bomba Stereo or so no. someone was opposite him no, and 
like the whole park was watching Post Malone. Was it? Was it Walk the Moon? Yes, it was Walk the Moon. It was. It was Walk the Moon. Like Walk the Moon's not even old, but it turns it's out not. all of the people wearing Iverson jerseys were watching Post Malone. Yeah. I stand by my I, choice. I will say, like, I think that is one of the things the year Jen came with us before was so great because two of the headliners were Paul McCartney and Metallica. Yeah. And, like, the people who bought the one-day passes were older. Like, there were baby baby boomers did that, you know? Um, a one-day pass to Lollapalooza is either the same price or cheaper than a ticket to see Paul McCartney. So they just, the crowd was very diverse that year. And then Paul McCartney played opposite The Weeknd. And all the youngins went down to see The Weeknd while we camped to see Paul McCartney. Because because we're not savages. Like We're not fools. We are- you know, red you know blooded human up. beings who understand. I yeah, that like this year. So the we week, did not the weekend came this year, and they were opposite Vampire Weekend, and so like which yeah, was great. It was the battle of the weekends. Yeah, so like I'm yeah, proud of first them. First of all, kudos for for that for those who booked those two um, two acts. I am um, proud of that scheduling. Yes. That's great. But also, like, that feels a little bit more like a toss-up, like, and, like, a question of, you know, just, like, what you're into. Preference. And preference. Right. For for people who chose to see The weekend over Paul McCartney a la 2015, like, I, I don't, I don't know. I don't, it's, it's, I don't yeah, understand yeah, that. Yeah, I'm just not going to even try to put myself. Paul McCartney can only eat stem cells for so long and stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> it was also just... An amazing set. Uh, it was wild. Like it was that great. Was a, that was you want to talk about also like just like feeling like you're at a, a concert of of the headliners. Oh yeah. Like, the the effects, the performance, like the videos, yeah, the, the array of stories. Songs. Yeah. He he had all these great anecdotes about, you know, just being a Beatle and like, oh, I recorded this oh, song. Yeah. I recorded I Wanna Hold Your Hand with this guitar and we're like, Whoa, okay, all right. And just like, <laughs> oh, just... I wrote this with my friend John and we're like, Oh, 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 your friend John? Okay. Okay. Which John. I see you. <laughs> Which John hmm. Paul? I wonder who that could be. <laughs> um and also it was what I really, really loved about that performance was like, you know, when when, I would imagine when Paul McCartney performs, generally he's performing, you know, in some kind of stadium where people pay top dollar for front row tickets. Whereas with all the the people in front, the people who spent time to camp out and they really wanted to see that particular show close up. So they got there early. Yes. They waited right when the gates opened. They ran right. in to get that yeah, spot. So you're, and they have been there since 11 exactly. a.m. So the currency there is love as opposed to actual money. So like. It was so you had young people in the front row knowing all the words to all of his songs through every stage of his career, and I think like he had kind of this existential moment during that performance. Yeah. Like two or three songs in, he asked to turn the house lights on so he could look at everybody, and he just kind of stared at us for like a solid like twenty thirty seconds. It was like it was a I, lot. I just I just sorry guys, I just wanna I just wanna drink all this in. Like he had he had a moment because I, I you know there are. You know, there were certainly it was such owners, a different crowd. Yeah, there were a lot. It was of a young very folks different crowd who were excited to see him, and that was super cool. So that, like, I I don't know how that performance is ever gonna, you know, be another performance at Lollapalooza, but like, that's fine. You know, he's a beetle and he's amazing. So, you know, it, it's it's no one else's fault. Yeah. <laughs> one of the things that stood out at Lollapalooza, one of my experiences at my first one, was the people being carted off. Because uh, some people have too much to drink or do not drink enough water or have problems with asthma or because there's – do other things do that other are things. not and legal. The other things are the things that I want to mention because I've seen people carted off who looked like they were unconscious or like they had thrown up. You know, things that I'm used to seeing from people who have had too much to drink. But I saw something that unsettled me to my very core, and it was someone being carted off who was wide awake. Yeah. And cackling like the Joker. Just like, ah, <laughs> just being carted away. Just like, let me out. Let me loose. He was I, 
It's it it's interesting. Um, so they send out a survey every year, and I did my Lollapalooza survey, and this is the first year I can remember them asking, would your experience at Lollapalooza be, like, better or worse or the same if it was an 18-plus fest? So much better. Well, the eight, and, the 16-year-olds are not the general problem it's the oh disagreement i I don't know i there were some they are there doing things they don't know how to do i mean some yeah probably the person who died um probably wouldn't be dead if they weren't at Lollapalooza. now that's fair but it seemed like most of the people who were getting into trouble were in like college age from what i saw i disagree i think they were all seven 16 17 18 there, yeah, there were they some were people young. where I was like, you just learned to walk yesterday. What are yeah, you doing? Yeah, the, the, the high schoolers. And I, it's like hard because it, I don't want to be like, all the teenagers are the problem. Kids of Palooza I, was fine. <laughs> but I do think that like, for their own safety, like teenagers are going to experiment with things. I don't know that that is something that can really realistically be stopped. But I think that maybe if you're going to experiment with a new drug, um, don't do it when it is outside in a hundred degree heat surrounded by a hundred thousand strangers. Like that's not, that's not safe. Yeah, And I would imagine do that. a lot of, a lot of drugs that people are consuming, like it's just from like someone's backpack, you know, they don't know what's in it, yeah. they don't know where it came from. And that combined with the elements and maybe ha- never having experimented with those drugs before. I mean, it's it's not exactly a recipe if, for good ex- a good time. And if you're at Perry's, which a lot of these kids are, they're at Perry's, you're in the middle of a mosh pit. So um, you can't really get out for help if you do choose to seek help. Yeah, that was so, one of the problems with Bruno Mars. We actually... We were kind of close to the stage, and someone midway through was, like, carrying a person out. And Mm -hmm. when you're in the front of a crowd that is a couple thousand people deep easily, you're not, you know, it's going to take minutes to just get out of the crowd. It's going to take a while to get out of there. Yeah. So if it's touch and go, it's really really a bad scene, and there's no way the EMTs are getting to you. And I do – I also think that Lollapalooza doesn't do a good job of – advertising the medical tent if that makes sense like yeah they market on the maps everyone knows there's a medical tent and they let you know like you can get help there but what they don't tell you is that medical tent is not gonna call the cops uh so it's just kind of like in college when people would drink too much underage or whatever they don't want to get the help because they think that they're gonna get in trouble and you know, that should not be something that prevents you from seeking medical attention. Yeah. So I wish it was more well known that the medical tent is just going to help you. Yeah. And it's also free. They're not, unless you actually need to be transported to a hospital, they're just going to treat you and let you go. Yeah. So if, if for some reason, listeners, you find yourself in a place having taken some wacky tobacco or some other such drug, and you, it was. I don't think most of it was wacky <laughs> tobacco. I think it was a lot of other stuff. If you're taking some uppers and downers, um, go to the medical tent, please. Because yeah, please just get help. Just the number of people whose friends were just like, "Oh no, they're unconscious." Help. The number of people who need new friends. Yeah, and then the number like, of friends who were just like, "She's just sleeping." What? No, she's face down remember... on a baseball diamond. <laughs> One year. Um, oh man, I think it was Kings of Leon, because I think it was a headliner we didn't care that much about. Kings of Leon's a, and, that's a fit. Yeah, we we were just there because we didn't like the other headliner, and, um, Ellie and I were there, and the girl was just passed out on the hill, and her friends just were gone, and we were like, what? is happening i was like if her friend doesn't come back in like 30 seconds we have to go and get one of us has to go and get the emts because what the hell people just abandon their passed out 
drunken, high friends. You're bad people. Don't do that. Well, when help are, them. When are you going to see Post Malone again? I mean, you know. Right. You know what? You're right. That was very. I I wasn't. Thinking. How dare you judge? I, the friend would understand. I know. They would understand. He sang. You better know what? Now. If you like left me on a hill, vulnerable and unconscious, because you really wanted to see Post Malone, like I would understand. It's not like I would never speak to you again. <laughs> Test me, please. Hmm, <laughs> yeah. Um, so one other tragedy happened during Lollapalooza, and that was during Camila Cabello's performance. So while she oh was performing, uh, excellently, may I add, she was doing a bang-up job. She was doing a great job. That was a great show. Uh, like we said, backup dancers, whole thing. She was doing great. And all of a sudden, on the main stage of Lollapalooza, they cut in a live stream of Fortnite. Because the streamer Ninja, who's a very popular, the most popular Fortnite streamer, uh, was live from Lollapalooza. And he was all weekend. All weekend. Ninja, so then. anyone who was watching his Twitch stream that weekend would know he was live from Lollapalooza. I think, like, the Chicago Bulls gave him a Chicago Bulls jersey. Like, it was a whole thing. Yeah, there was, like, a gaming lounge for him and. Yeah. Yeah, he was, like, backstage so there, and all sorts of stuff. There was some gaming presence. Like, Twitch was there. Um, they had some cool stuff like that, um, but they decided to play his live stream while one of their main – like, she was the second to last With act of the audio. night. With audio. With now, audio. Now, that's the problem. Um, he was playing Fortnite live on – you know, this, there's a big screen behind every stage, and then there's side screens as well. And because he was on the main stage, his audio overpowered all other audio, um, mm-hmm. and – it was Twitch audio, so it was just gunshot, 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 and all right, all right, fam, we got there, we did it. It's just like mumble, mumble talk, like that sort of stuff. And this problem is is there's two problems. There was with a this. performance. There's two. There problems was a performance happening. The most obvious one: it drowned out a performer who was trying to perform. Like she ran off stage for a second, then came back on and just like played through it like a bo- like a champ. But second, they did eventually turn it off. Yes, they did eventually turn off the audio and turn. Off, I think they took the stream off. But it took way too long. Yeah, it was and about it ten minutes. Of time. Yeah, yeah, way too. Long. Yeah. Um. The second problem is it's a game with just fucking gunshots. Yeah. Just loud gunshots yeah. in a, a giant open air arena, where there was worry that if the shooting that happened in Las Vegas didn't happen in Las Vegas, it was going to happen in Chicago. At at, yeah. at Lollapalooza. Yeah, and I, if you were at either of those performances, like, you could see the screens and you knew what was happening, mm-hmm. but if you were walking down, like, the main drag from end to end, you, you wouldn't be able to see the screens, but you would be able to hear it, mm-hmm. you know, if you were in between the Grant Park stage and Perry's, you can hear the audio yeah. from Grant Park. There are trees that are blocking your eye line into So you wouldn't be able to see the screens, the you would just be able to hear... Just gunshots big, and mumbling. Like gunshots. I I have to imagine the place that it was worse was if you were in the bathroom. If you were in a porta potty. Oh yeah. Because the sound gets very strange in there sometimes. And if you were in the ones right by the stage, it would have sounded pretty real, I would think. Well, and also like we're at this point, like mass shootings, I They've become so so common, and they're, they're so permeated throughout, you know, a, and, throughout this country in particular, that, like, it's not, like, of course our minds would go to that, you know. It's really actually a reasonable thing to be afraid of. Um, so that was just so yeah. careless. Um, yeah. I, I mean, if you could see the screens, like, I was never like, oh, my God, gunshots, because I could see the screens. I knew exactly right. what was happening. Right. Yeah, but, but if you couldn't see it, there are so many places that you would have been able to hear the audio but not see the visual. And that's just insanity. That just can't happen. What? And Yeah, the, it can't happen. The problem for me is, as someone who watches Twitch streams and who, who sometimes enjoys Fortnite, like watching Fortnite, uh, it's mm-hmm. a cool game to watch. You don't actually need the audio. Well, it's not that you don't need the audio. Like, you would want the audio, but... You're in a gigantic music festival. Like, a performance is happening. 
you you can mute it and yeah. you'll get most of the experience of watching him play. Like it's not the same thing, but also you're not watching it in the ideal Twitch experience. You're not at home in your jam jams. And like if this was something like it was on a television at the beer garden or the wine tent, you know, mm-hmm. totally not fine. If it was at any of the sponsor tents. Totally would have made sense. You can't hear anything at those sponsor tents outside of the that immediate area. Yeah, I mean, so they had totally fine. They had like a Bud Light lounge where you could play NBA Jam and do stuff like that. And yes, that was awesome. Um, maybe yeah. there is where you set up the TV, not on the main stage while the second to last act of the night is performing. Like, I yeah, that was nuts. So, it was nuts. And in years past, like they. When stages are empty and things are happening on the stages across for them, they've done different things on the screens. They show clips from past Lollapaloozas. They show photos of people using the official Lollapalooza hashtag on Twitter, Instagram. And they've even had, like, video game things before where it's like you could play in the Lollapalooza app and it would be put, like, someone's would be put on the screen um, they've done things where it's like measure if everyone can jump at the same time and see, you know, and they put that on the screen. They've done things like that before, and it's totally not disruptive to what is happening across the field. Yeah, it well, because those are all visual, like, they, it's a visual experience. It's like visual. Yeah, so it, it, the fact that they even put the audio up, um, up like, I just don't understand. It's not like he was, you know making the experience richer with his, like, oh, we got this fam, like, commentary. I, you know, it's, it it makes no sense. I would love to know the logic behind that decision. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, alas, we never will. Um, We never will. But this was. Probably because there was no logic to it. This was only (laughs) the second largest controversy that Ninja has been in. And Emily, you might not be familiar with this, but. I'm not. um, Recently, Ninja, the streamer who ruined Camilo Cabello's performance. Um, he, he did not ruin it. He okay. tried. He tried, but he failed. He attempted to. Um, he recently he has, has been in a little bit of a controversy because he has said that he w- does not or will not stream with a female streamer. Uh, D- without Wait, a, spe- wait, a wait, specific wait, female on. streamer? Hold up. Wait. Like women. Like he won't just... Just any. Without... I believe his wife present, or just in general. He doesn't yeah. want he's rumors. The, he's, this is, he's the Mike this Pence, is some Mike Pence right. shit. He's the Mike Pence of Twitch. Yeah. <laughs> now, I want to... Let me do the devil's advocate thing, because just dunking on him endlessly. He he issued another statement. Let me pull it up. Okay. Oh, yeah, he issued a, a clarifying statement. Let me look it up. For, sure, give me your I'm initial sure, response I'm sure while I'm pulling it up. The air. I'm sure whatever it is will clear the air. Um, I, it just, that excuse, it's, ah, oh God, it's just wild to me as a married person, but also just as a human being, like the whole, like, I can't be in a room with other women without my wife. That's like totally feeding into the boys will be boys. We cannot be helped. We're sexual beings thing. Also, like, as if another woman that like, and also as if like women are just going to fall at your feet, but then also like, right. you think I, I, I like. I'm just trying to picture a situation where twi- where he's playing with another woman, and then like he just whoops comes on to her. Like I don't think I, I think she would receive it well. I don't think he would be successful. So like, it, it's a assu- he's saying that assuming I, he would be successful if he just like whoops well, black out I, and then hit on hit on her. Sorry. There are a lot of levels to statements like that. It's like the. You just don't have any self-control, apparently. It's seeing women as sex objects. And then it's just the total, like, I don't understand. I feel like men should be more angry about statements like I this. wasn't thrilled about it if it makes you feel better. So yeah. here is his. It does. I think, I just think in general, like, when people make statements like that, you see, like, women being mad or outraged. And I'm just like, this is so insulting to yeah. men. You can control yourselves. You're adults. But he, and... here is his clarifying <laughs> statement um, that he made. Oh, good. Uh, 
Can't wait. I wanted to take a moment to address the discussion around the article that came out over the weekend. While I understand some people have implied my views mean I have something against playing with women, I want to make clear the issue I'm addressing is online harassment and my attempt to minimize it from our life. It is something that affects all streamers, especially ones that make their relationships public. I wanted to bring attention to this issue, and my comments should not be characterized as anything beyond that. Having just celebrated my one-year anniversary, my wife and my family will always be the most important thing to me, and I am doing my best to protect them. We are fans of all kinds of streamers and gamers. Curvy Llama, Julia TV, and Haley at... Haley... Haley at... at Addy Zuto. Addy Zuto. Are a few of our favorites, and we encourage others to check out their channels. I look forward to the opportunity to meet and play with all kinds of Fortnite players in the future tournaments and events. So, I want to just add some background here that you guys might not necessarily have. I was going to say, I respect wanting to limit online harassment. People take things so far on the internet. And, like, the things that I do respect that I don't a lot. know if you have the full context on Twitch streamers and what they go through sometimes. Like, he... I mean, a- absolutely. He has millions of... Like, he has a lot of viewers. Like, hundreds of thousands or millions. Mm-hmm. And streamers will, when they gain popularity, sometimes have people, fans, do things like swatting their home. Like, sending the cops to their home. Saying that they have their family at gunpoint and... The cops should come full force uh, to try and get the cops to break down their door. They will look up people's family. They will look up where they live. They will post that shit online for no good reason. So, and they will also this dig is... into your past to put things out of, take things out of context to fuck with your life. So, you know where else this happens a lot? That on an area of the internet that I frequent more. Uh, I don't just I don't where, anywhere where women are. Online, online uh, yes, I was going to say the um, beauty guru, like YouTube community, oh, yeah. Instagram and YouTube, like women who do, and men um, who do makeup tutorials on the internet, uh, they don't get swatted so much, but they, do, oh man, particularly like digging up old tweets or whatever, oh, it's really bad, and exposing their family members, posting addresses online. Fans just show up at their houses sometimes. It's really creepy. Yeah. So I understand wanting to minimize the exposure. Like, but the idea that by not, by restricting yourself to that extent, somehow that will stop people from finding something to pervert and attack you yeah. with. I think it's just underestimating the the level of maliciousness. I agree. I, f- I feel like you're pro. You're not more or less exposed based on the gender of the person I, you're yeah. screaming with. I don't think it would make that big if of a they're gonna, If they're going to attack you with things that you... They're going to attack gonna do, you. If they're going to attack you, they're going to attack you. And if they're gonna, going to attack you with things that are taken out of context, they can do that in any situation. It's not just situations where you're playing games with women. So And, it, and it, it's like if they're going to accuse you of... You know, being with another woman or something like that. It could be something as easy as liking a tweet. Yeah. You know, it doesn't have to be a stream. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, I, once you're dealing with people who are acting in bad faith, I just feel like res- changing your actions or changing your beliefs and your behaviors to suit what you think that audience is going to respond to. You don't need to give them ammo. They'll make their own ammo. Like Yeah, they'll make it up. It doesn't matter. You've existed um, in the world online for likely most people for decades. If you think that someone can't find something, you're you're probably wrong. And if, if yeah. you're gonna change your behavior in that way, I feel like you're doing a disservice to the people you could be collaborating with or the people you could be talking to and to yourself for not, you know, opening yourself up to collaborating, um, then you would And be. it happens and it happens to everybody Kind of without reason. Um, it re- it happened recently to a pitcher who was pitching in the All-Star game in July. And people dug up a ton of tweets from when he was like 16, 17, in which he was, you know, incredibly racist. And he deserved to, he had to go to sensitivity training. And he, that's good. He needed it. But like, people will dig through anything they can find on you. It does if they want to, they're going to yeah, do and it. And also, like, and... from what I know about um, the tri- 
just like the video game community in general and then with Twitch in particular, like, you know, if you're a woman in that space, it is so – you want to talk about harassment. Like, they yeah. women are so targeted already and, like, he has – such a huge platform and like he could he could be bringing so many like talented women into the fold and the fact that he's just like well assholes are gonna asshole so i'm not gonna bring you know i'm not gonna be playing with women like that in a way i'm sorry to cut you off i was just saying in a way it's almost like he didn't mean to but it's like he's acknowledging that women have it so much worse, and he just doesn't want to bring that yeah. into his sphere, into his world. Yeah, yeah. Because he knows I'm, he knows they have so much I'm harassment. I'm not going to stick my neck out. And, yeah. I'm, I'm just going to be over here not, having a good time, fam. And uh, I don't want any part of that nastiness you have to deal with. Yeah. So, Ninja, ruined, commi- well, ruined some of the songs that I wanted to hear. Yeah. <laughs> Did his best to frighten people, apparently. Yeah, that was – but, you know, he was probably in the gaming den and did not necessarily – that was probably not his call. I actually – yeah, I don't blame him. I doubt that. he had any idea he was on those screens. Yeah. Yeah, it – I doubt it. It was just Lollapalooza being idiotic. Yeah, but I thought that that would be a way to tie this this all together. Um, so – It's on – Final thoughts on Lollapalooza. Any anything you'd like to say for people who haven't gone or as as a I think it's a lot experience? of fun. Sure, I think it's a lot of fun. I always have a good time. I think I would like it more if it were eighteen plus. But I think another way to make it better without having to do that would be just booking more legacy acts mm-hmm. like Paul McCartney and Metallica because it just makes the crowd more diverse. And everything that's annoying about, like, any kind of group of person is just diluted. Yeah. Uh, Jack White was uh, pretty tame. Yeah, you know, and I think a part of the problem with the crowd is that the lineup has geared more hip-hop, rap, EDM every year. It gets a little more towards that instead of um, pop or rock. And I think... I like the mixture. I like having all of it. And I think the more balance they have, the better the crowd. Balance of genre and also balance of, you know, when their most popular music came out. Sure. Yeah. Like, you're obviously you're obviously going to skew more toward, you know, people who have new albums dropping that year. But, you know, uh, like a, a little bit of a larger smattering of older music would be cool. I... And I would say the year I went for um, LCD Sound System, the crowd was great. Like, I just diversity in acts leads to diversity in the crowd. And I think it makes a better experience for everybody. My big takeaway towards the middle of of day one, uh, Khalid was performing. And there were, you know, it was the big act at the time slot, very clearly. And during the performance, someone managed to climb. On top of the scaffolding that was holding up oh. some of the big rows of amps. You're going to bring my anxiety back. And uh, there were maybe – so one of this piece of scaffolding, there were maybe ten people like kind of halfway up it, just kind of like climbing. And, and one person climbed all the way to the top and sat on top of it. He was maybe 30 feet up, maybe 30, 40 feet up. And he was just sitting on top of the scaffolding. Then another person climbed all the way to the top. And no one stopped them for about five to ten minutes. They were just kind of up I there. Not, I did not like and it. And there were people just halfway. And then the cops showed up and all the people who were halfway just kind of bolted. But the people who were still up there just kind of stayed up there. And then one of them climbed down and mooned everyone as he was climbing down. And the second guy did pull-ups. Naturally. He did pull-ups oh, that while... Where it, that, that's where they broke me, was when they did pull-ups. Yeah. Oh, he did pull-ups like while it. dangling 30 or 40 feet above a crowd of people. And, like, metal... There were, like, metal barricades and stuff below yeah. him. There were... It was... It's not like it would have been a soft landing. And then fallen. there was another group that followed um, with the... I don't know. I don't know what you call those things, uh, but with with the with a similar setup, kind of like twenty feet over, but it was a swinging ladder, 
instead of a sturdy it structure of metal. It was like metal. a rope ladder. It yeah. was terrifying. It was one of those kind of crow's nests where you're, you have the spotlights. Um, someone mm -hmm. climbed – two people climbed up into one of them with a rope ladder. Now, that was not a problem after that, and I guess those people were thrown out. And had their wristbands cut, and they were kicked out. My understanding is that they did have their wristbands cut on day one. <laughs> Ouch! That sucks. Well, yeah, but they also almost stupid. killed themselves and others. So, you know. Yeah, don't be stupid, and uh, you won't get your wristband. But I would say one off. of the big takeaways, I, it felt like everything could go crazy at any given moment, and that was kind of great and kind of terrifying. And also, I really enjoyed just the variety of acts and. Some of the, yeah. like, weird experiences between the acts and the crowds. Like, when Vampire Weekend came out and played A-Punk three times in a row, it just felt like Hank Hill making Bobby smoke an entire carton of cigarettes because he caught him smoking. Like, oh, you think you like this song, huh? Oh, you think you like A-Punk? It kind of, it kind of, you're it right. So that is what funny. it felt like. I, some people got really mad. I loved it. I thought it was hilarious. Oh, you think you like our music, huh? <laughs> You think you like this? Well, we're going to... Uh, I just wanted it to be an oh, hour man. of yeah, A-Punk. They... I would have been furious <laughs> if it had been an hour of A-Punk. Welcome. I would have been livid. <laughs> they played it three times in a row with no... They didn't say anything in between playing them. They just they just played it three they quick times. They just did it again. One, two, three. Yeah. Oh, man. And just like the weird moments, like St. Vincent having her dancing uh, Silent Hill monster. Uh, mm -hmm. Some of the, the bands that, like, had never really played in front of a crowd this big before and them just kind of drinking yeah. it in was really cool. I And I that's one of the reasons I like um, the BMI sp stage. So the BMI stage is definitely the smallest. It's really small. It overlooks Lake Michigan. It's great. And it's very much just up and coming acts they don't they maybe have maybe have an album likely they just have an ep you know really small small performers and you can discover the coolest stuff at at the bmi stage i love Very it there true. yeah remember um l king played l king and, played yeah, bmi oh, she was amazing she yeah. was great yeah she had a hit that year mm -hmm. yeah that's true so and uh there was the great the great plane that would drag stuff by occasionally, advertising beer, condoms, and lauv. That that dude who yes. I like me better. The dude who sings that hit, love, 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 love. It's love. We know what you're doing. Um, but a plane flew by and it just said, "See a white boy sing about his emotions." Four o'clock at American Eagle. I was like, "Yep, great point." Yeah, it's, there you so go. So that I think is Lollapalooza. Thank you so yeah. much, Emily, for joining us for the cross another crossover, Worst Friends Forever. Yeah, of course. Um, Deep Listens Pod. Thank you, Jen, for your first debut show. How did, what do you think, Jen? How'd you do? Um, I think I did. A, I think I deserve an Emmy now. I think that's where we are. Is that how yeah. this works? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. A podcast yeah, okay. Emmy. I like it. <laughs> yeah. I'm into it. So I don't know if we're going to do another concert review. People, let us know if you like this show. We Maybe I'll go to more concerts. No, I'm not. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> It'll happen, guys. Don't worry. I make sure he, I make sure he gets Concerts are very – I make sure he gets outside. Don't worry. Concerts are very different than festivals, I think. True, true. Um, yeah, so more concerts, maybe Festivals more. are a commitment. Yeah. yeah it, maybe more mini festivals – you know, punctuated with the occasional Lollapalooza. If people want more shows about music, we can do that. And also online controversies. So, thank you, Emily. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Jen. Thanks for having me. And until next time, peace! <laughs> <laughs>